on live. We're on live. Hello. Tuesday evening. We are together. Jeffrey and Deborah. <laughs> the Bible study. Um, we are on session three. And um, this one here, we're studying it. It's kind of like, okay, Lord, where are we going on this one? But um, right. it's his business. And so um, thankful for all of you that are um, online with us. Whoops. And we've got a double. Yeah. You're, not, you're not hearing double. It really is double. Yeah, we're double, <laughs> we're double the trouble. Let's see. Really is double. Hope everybody's doing okay. Feeling okay. If you're not, don't let us know. <laughs> Are you feeling the love? Yeah. That's what we're talking about, love. <laughs> What's um, love got to do? Oh, goodness. Yeah, I really went one way to the other <laughs> way, didn't I? Um, um, the subject matter is, I mean, it's, again, it's... Love. Um, <laughs> it's unreachable. Unre and um are untouchable <laughs> sometimes it's untouchable right trust me <laughs> and, um, um, um but it's kind of ironic that the, these scriptures came up i was looking at them it'd been very easy to, to, to dismiss them and go somewhere else or do something different but i didn't feel to um maybe there's a reason yeah. um uh, I want to say um, to the Rock Church, you've been fabulous to us during this time. Um, you all know my wife tested positive a while back for the COVID. Um, I had COVID. Tomorrow I get retested through the VA. Um, we're both feeling okay, doing good. Yes. I'm just a little tired. I, I'm just a little tired. I don't know if she is anymore. Which has pretty much been um, part of a recovery, anyhow, is right. a lot of being tired. So, been doing a lot of sleeping. It's good for him. Yeah. yeah. So, been sleeping a lot. And I um, um, like to say I'd like to go out and do something, but <laughs> I'd just rather sleep. Um, uh, not terrible. Uh, you that have known me over the years, that sounds. That um, sounds so not like it. No. But um, I'm very thankful for the Rock Church. You know, well, they have taken care of us. Yes, thank you. Um, even through, um, it's not just this that was going on for the Rock Church. Uh, Pastor Evans and Sister Evans lost their father and father-in-law. And um, Sister Hogg is with them right now, also at their home. And I know the Rock Church has taken care of them. Um, just praying. loved on them and everything, and we're still praying for them. Yes. So, um, God knows. Um, uh, again, I'm very thankful that I was allowed to be a part of Sean Whaley's last Friday's um, funeral service. My wife and I, was awesome. I asked if my wife could join me, and it was um, most definitely was okay with that. And so I'm very thankful to the bishop and to the Antioch Church and yeah, to the Whaley's and um, to all the rites for allowing us to be a part of that. Lost a dear friend. Um, Some of you knew him. And yeah. that's that attends our church and um, know that it's a loss for you as well, too. Yeah. You, you feel it, I'm sure, in some measure. Well, whether many of, you, many of you have been prophesied to or right. ministered to in her healing and Right. A lot of different emotional type of things, and even up to the point um, not too long before he passed away, some of you um, were being encouraged by him. But um, but I'm very thankful that um, he's finished his race, and a little jealous in that part. Yes, um, ready to go home and see Jesus myself. Um, not wishing anything, whatever. And, don't take that out of context. Uh, Deuteronomy, I'm going to turn there to 19 and 9. Get you some coffee or some 
tea or something to drink. Or a V8 energy drink, yeah, which is, is not tomato <laughs> juice. If you know me, I don't like tomato juice. So. Get your Bible out. Get ready for the Word. I'm going to ask my wife probably do most of the reading, but I can read this one. Okay. Um, the next. She's so, going to give me all the hard ones. Yep, most definitely. <laughs> She's the smart one. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt keep all thy all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee, beside thee three. Let's go to... Um, Second Samuel, um, verse um, one, chapter one, verse twenty-five through twenty-six. Yeah. Okay. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle, O Jonathan, that was slain in thy high places? I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing in the love, passing the love of a woman. You know, it's not, uh, I don't believe it's a coincidence. After you read that, my Lord quickened my spirit that, that we would be talking about this. You know, uh, like we'd said, I uh, lost a dear friend and, um, you know, father, father-in-law. And there's, um, there are, We've had some friends in our lives that we've just been so blessed. And hopefully every one of you could say the same thing, that just uh, a, a true a true brother and a friend, um, that you would almost, honestly, they were closer than a brother. Um, you felt, um, I never had any brothers, um, so, it, you know, it was nice. And you have brothers, but there, there are times when God just will give you that, that someone like Jonathan and David. That well, comes. and... And a lot of times, even earthly brothers, um, though um, we have been come close over the years, these last recent years, uh, my older brother is seven years older than I am. Um, he'll be 68. Yeah. Um, and uh, Doug is four years, um, four years, four months younger than I. And um, there's a lot of time gap there, yeah. especially when you're young. But um, fortunately, in the last 10 years or so, within the last 10 years, Brent has come into um, to know the Lord again. Wonderful. Um, and it has drawn us all together closer. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very thankful for that. That's why I love the body of Christ, because uh, there's just the Spirit of God. There's a bond that's formed with the Spirit of God. So it's really awesome when you're when your real family is living for Christ too, because you've got not only the sibling bond, but you have the spiritual bond. Right. Right. It's good to see Hope come on. Uh, yes. Talk about Brent, uh, Hope, Brent's wife and uh, my sister-in-law. Thank you for your prayers, Hope. Um, I talked Thank to Brent you. today and, and they both have been praying for us um, earnestly. We appreciate it. The strong bond between two men, um, David and, and Saul, uh, I mean, David and Jonathan was was really a great bond. Um, it was uh, no bond that's probably been matched. Um, you're talking about a man that um, his father was trying to kill his son-in-law and to um, because of sin in his life and different things that's going on in his life. But um, David was still loyal to his dad. Um, though he knew his dad was not in the right, um, tried to help his dad to see things right, the right way, but build a bond with um, um, with David, like second to none. It proves to us, it shows us that um, um, the love of God can actually give us revelation and understanding um, about what really is going on, what truth is happening, where um, God shows us um, in his love um, how strong he actually is. First Samuel 18, 1 through 4 says, 
And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knitted, knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And David stripped himself of his robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even his sword into his bow and to his girdle. Uh, he really gave it, what he was giving was a symbol of who he is, of who he was. Right. Uh, he gave all that he had to David. Um, I give you what is supposedly promised to him as firstborn son, which we know mm -hmm. David was anointed king of Israel. And Jonathan understood that, but Saul tried to play that against them so that um, Jonathan would feel the same way that Saul did. But in those type of actions that Jonathan did for David, he showed him that he knew who the true king was. Yeah. Uh, How great it is, too, to have a friend that um, knows your calling in God, can feel the anointing God has in your life. That doesn't mean that they have to or that it has to be there, but it, it's it's neat when you, you know, you can go and you can share Say that, say that God moves on you with, as a prophet, you know, and you go and you can say things prophetically to your friend and they don't look at you or judge you or, or you know, they're, they're gleaning from it. They're loving that moment, that, that time, that stuff that you share together that's in God. And um, I think that's important that we, that we, we have that in our life um, and that we are that to someone else. I think that's real important. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, death, um, with brother hog and, and then our friends, um, that have passed away causes you to remember, um, that very reason right there. Um, unfortunately, he met at 61 years old, as much as I'm trying to, um, let people, how much they mean to me, why they're alive it never really becomes evident because I don't know if we really understand how important those people are until they're gone from our life. Right. Sometimes um, not the full impact for sure. As a Smith family, um, we are very, 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 very fortunate that um, our beloved uh, parents, that um, dad turns 92 um, next month, mom at 91, that are still with us, still um, have sharpness in their mind. Their bodies are wearing out, um, but they are still pretty sharp. Yes. Um, still have a lot of understanding, still able to, even at 61, Brent 67, um, Doug at 56, 57, is able to turn to them for advice, right. for wisdom. And um, when we won't have that in the future, I think that's really going to grasp a hold of us even greater how more important um, our family has been to us. Yeah, absolutely. First Samuel 23. Um, I'm sorry, did I already read? No, I didn't read. Go ahead and read First Samuel 20, 30 through 42. I missed that page. First Samuel 20, 30 through 42. A little lengthy, but not too bad. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not, do not, I know that thou hast... The poor woman always thou, gets played, Yeah, she? right. <laughs> um, do not... not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness. And as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore I will now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? 
And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. This was his own son. Whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow behind him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto the lad and said unto him, Go, car go carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. They kissed one another and wept one another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be upon between be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. I want to say something here. There's something great when you have a brother or sister in the Lord or just a friend that will stand in the gap against the enemy for your soul in prayer, um, in, in um, being there, you know, when you're discouraged, when you're down. Um, if there's, and you know, that Jesus is the best illustration of a friend to us and how that happens. And, um, that's what I believe he's wanting from us to be toward others, you know, that we'll be that kind of friend to others. And it's difficult to maybe do that to everyone. I understand it takes time to be a, a good friend, but those that the Lord has given to you and you know that he's given to you, work on that friendship, encourage that person, strengthen that person, um, because uh, it's rare sometimes to yeah. find that closeness. It's um I, I don't know the percentage. I used to know the percentage of of um, how many f close friends that each people have, but it's um, most times like two or three in, in a lifetime. Yeah. And if you have had that, and if you're able to nourish that, and to be able to uh, bring forth uh, fruit from that, um, it will be absolute um, um, blessing. Um, additive to your life. I think there are no scriptures there where what you read too is that Jonathan realized that no matter what he would do and what he would say that his father was going to pursue to kill David. Right. He was going to change his mind yeah. when he even tried to um, throw a javelin at his own son. Right. That sin got so um, made him so hard it caused him to um, go against his own flesh and blood. And when da when Jonathan and David became together that day, and they were announcing in, in their way, should I run? Should I hide? Um, is this going to last for a while? And then Jonathan obviously with the arrows and then with the speech and then had his uh, servant go on and how they wept so um, much uh, during that time because they knew mm -hmm. that their friendship would never be able to be able to sit around their house or the fireplace with his father and his father-in-law, his wife and the kids around that they would never be able to enjoy that close type of friendship that they always even though they had it, that it would never be able to be, be able to mature where the other family members would be able to glean from it. And that had to be a hard moment. And oh. you, you knew just that, that you weren't going to be able to go and, um, you know, pull them into each other's house and share your grandkids and have that moment. Yeah, um, you can't go to the soccer game with one another. Right. Um, you know, whatever they did. But... Um, I, I want to go ahead and uh, 
Let's go ahead and read, if you wouldn't mind, First uh, Samuel 23, 16 through 17. Okay. And Jonathan Saul's son arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto you, unto thee, and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. I like verse 18. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. So here's what you said earlier. Um, Jonathan recognized that the hand of God was on David, and it was God's will for David to be king. And Jonathan's love for David was so great, he wasn't even considering his position that he really should have been, you know, right after Saul, like you said, that yeah. he, he wasn't considering that. He was considering that he wanted his friend okay. He wanted him to be safe. Well, even, and, and I think a lot of times people miss, don't, don't see this either. Jonathan loved his father. Yes, yes. Um, it did not diminish his love for his father, even though he knew his father was wrong. Didn't mean that he was going to fall into the same sin as his father, though. Right. right. Wow, that really speaks a lot of volume because a lot of times a father um, causes their sons or their daughters or their family to walk away from God because they get their feelings hurt. Um, Preacher is human, because right. I'm one of them, right. um, makes mistakes, and all of a sudden right. now, um, you know, I'm not going to listen to him anymore, or I'm not going to go to the church anymore, um, I'm not going to do this. What, what Jonathan did was something that's past the norm. He says, okay, I love my father, I'm going to obey my father, but I am still going to continue my relationship with my friend. And a lot of times in the world today, people stop their relationship with God because of their father's shame. And it was mentioned here earlier about the shame that was put, put upon Jonathan. The father usually puts his shame upon his ch children if he doesn't recognize it. Even uh, as much as possible as, as throughout life, I've tried to rebuke the shame in my life so Justin or Ellington wouldn't have that shame. Um, unfortunately, they have picked up shame from my life, um, even as much as, I, as possible as I'm, I'm able. Um, I still fall into a lot of this type of different thing. But even when the father was rebelling totally against God, mm -hmm. you have to hand it to Jonathan that he... Right. I mean, he died with his dad. Right. He was still fighting with his father. Right. Yeah, right up to the end. Side by side, yeah. fighting the same war yeah. that his father proclaimed. And knowing that his father was not going to win because he was not um, in favor of God during that time. But he still showed himself faithful. Right. But he was also still faithful to the man of God. David made a lot of mistakes, um, especially at the end of his life, um, going down right. further um, later on and when he became king, obviously uh, committed adultery and then um, had the, the, the husband basically set up to be killed. Um, I mean, you're talking about um, this sin after sin, but the key thing that David had that most other men, even to this day, don't have, and I try to um, um, have it, um, is that I ask God to forgive me in a sincere way right. that um, um, that I am truly sorry. And sometimes and David didn't really realize how sorry he was until, forgive me for saying it this way, was caught by um, the, the, the priest when he brought the story about the lamb and, and everything. And and David rose up and said, who did this? And he said, you did, King. Yeah. You did this. You took away. And when that came to him, because sin will blind you. But right. when that came to him, 
He yeah. didn't rebel against the, the priest or the preacher and, and say, oh, you hurt my feelings. Instead, he said, that's, uh, that's conviction. I'm going to rip, I'm going to put sackcloth. I'm going to put ash. I'm going to repent and I'm going to make things right with God. Paid a dear price. Um, his family paid a dear price uh, for that. But um, um, he was a man that was uh, after God's own heart. And that gives me hope. Yeah. Um, I don't know about anybody else out there, but um, um, the way the world is today, um, it's very easy. The world promotes hate, right? Um, promotes um um, oh, it promotes, uh, my mind just went blank, um, um, racism. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they tell you they don't, but everything's about race. They promote um, about um, rich and poor, middle class. Everything is in categories. And they say that, you know, we shouldn't think that way, but that's all they cram down our throats instead of allowing us to be able to be the men and the women that God wants us to be and to love our brother right. as Christ loved me. And, um, and I will say this, um, I've had people that have been ministers under me, people that have been in our church. Some have left, some have um, still part of us. Um, thing is that, um, 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 I asked people not to text me and, that same person's texting me right now, but um, I'm hope, I, I don't see it on the, on the computer, so that's good. But through that um, process, um, they supposedly—I I don't, I don't want to say supposedly—but you're supposed to love them, but it does not mean that you have to fellowship with them if they're still doing the same thing or they're still promoting it or they're still making it look like you're the one that caused this problem and they're the one that um, they're the victim or, or whatever and pretty much everybody knows and you searched your heart you did this you did that um, you, you you've got to love them it doesn't mean that you have to um, uh, fellowship with them that you have to agree with them mm -hmm. and some of them are the greatest uh, Bible, um, they send scriptures out on uh, me, we, I think it's called now, um, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, and they could do a little this and a little that. And they said, man, it's perfect, but you know their life. That doesn't mean that you judge them. That means that you love them. And you pray that God gives them to the understand the revelation and not that they're okay. It's just the grace that God's given them a chance to be able to repent. Um, a lot of times in this world today we live in, oh, I still feel God, so I'm okay. Well, <laughs> um, I worked in the prison system. I've been a correctional officer and I've been a chaplain. And I've heard people that committed horrendous crimes that they said they felt the presence of God. I don't know if that's what they felt or not, but the thing is, is that our feelings will lie to us, but our actions of our repentance and changing our lifestyle um, shows so much more. So if I'm really trying to live for him and, and I go back to these scriptures here that we just read that, um, as much as much power as I'm able to do to change the mind of, of a father, of, of a king, and seeing that it's not going to change my, my devotion to um, the man of God, the, the love of God, um, that will never change my view of them. And I continue to pray, still loyal to um, my, my father, mm -hmm. um, my earthly father that might not be doing what's right, mm -hmm. Um, but not giving him, not let, not telling him he's okay, because definitely Jonathan um, got to the place where his own father threw the javelin at him. 
but he still honored his dad. Died the same day, side by side with his own father. Wow. And still um, was pleasing God. Mm-hmm. That just that just kind of blows me away. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let's look at you know the spirit of Jonathan. If you could say there was a spirit of Jonathan. <clears throat> What would that entail? And if, if you feel something, you can text it on there, um, list it on the bottom, and we can talk about it. Um, but one of the things that that Jonathan, he had a revelation, and um, he understood, uh, he made it, well, first of all, he didn't make it about him. And uh, I love that. I love that none of the time during this time that I ever read about Jonathan do I ever feel like he's making it about Jonathan. Um, secondly, he, he promoted unity. He tried, like you said earlier, he tried to get where his father was, you know, talk, trying to have that conversation with his father, wanting to know why are you upset with him? What cause is it that you would have to, to kill David? And, and, um, he was a, he was protective. Um, I believe that's another thing, you know, with the, uh, the spirit of Jonathan was protective that God would want us to protect one another. He would want us you know, we got upset with those that uncovered Noah, um, that were mocking him. But he, but but um, the the sons that walked backwards and covered up um, Noah's nakedness that that spoke volumes. Right. Um, right. It, our actions definitely there's a lot of, louder than what we say, um, what we do. You know, again. I've had people ask me to forgive them for what they've done or said or whatever, hug, cry, it felt good. But then the very next moment, a month later, sometimes uh, because I live away from different people at different times, I'll see them later, that they act awkward and their family acts weird to me. It shows that they really felt, they felt the conviction. So they did, but they still harbor their feelings without letting them go. Um, I'm still working on that. I think I think to a degree we all have probably those areas. Yeah. Speaking, um, speaking with a friend yesterday, we were talking about um, how shame works in our lives and wounds, and um, part of that is is we've got to. Um, we can do the forgiving part and the saving part and the releasing part, but then we've got to let our, our emotions get healed from it. It's a, it's, it, that's very important. Sometimes we don't let the Lord, we don't sit and, and, you know, give out all the emotions on that so he can heal all parts of that, that brought us the hurt and the wounds. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of things that we're teaching lately are very, um, uh, I don't want to use the word basic because no, nothing's basic at the word of God. But a lot of times um, um, we overlook the things that God just to simply say, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And one of the greatest commandments he brought up is love our God, our God, our um all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right. Then love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Then the, you know, I mean, realistically, the Ten Commandments come in after that. But if we would would sit and respond, not as a human, our human nature or our, our, our human feelings or our, 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 our aspects of, um, well, they should have known better. They know this. They know that. This, this, they should have done this to me, done that. But when we look and we step back and we see our actions toward other people or even toward God, e- even in a greater way, that our actions probably is more ugly than what has been given to us. Yes. And if I forgive them, and I truly work on loving them. And you notice I said working, working on loving them. Then I believe that the Lord truly forgives me and gives me the power, the anointing, the wisdom, the guidance to be able to love as he loved. 
you know, most of my prayers now is not, Lord, give me humility. I pray, Lord, give me your humility. Because yeah. man's humility is n- nothing. Lord, give me, um, let me be humble, not man's humble. Let me have the same um, humble as, as you. That's humility again, humble as, as you were. Talking about humility, the God of all gods. What he went through, and the, what he dealt with, the 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 the, 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 um, the place where um, he was. Uh, my, my mind, uh, I got to write up here. I just can't get it out. That uh, he was just uh, to me it had to be fabricasting that I created this soul. Yeah. And they turn on me that quick. And all they wanted was something. They wanted a free meal. They wanted, if you notice, the crowds got smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. He fed the 5,000 or more. And then he told them to go on home. They went on home. And he started teaching some more. And then he told them to go on home. And a lot of times he's down to three, four people mm-hmm. because what people wanted from him, they received and they left. Right. But it's not, it's it's our relationship, even in this world today, even greater now than it, even then, we have to have a relationship with him. It's not so much what you're going to do for me, God, how are you going to protect me from all this stuff that's going on in the world? But Lord, how do I need to behave? How do I need to react? And show me, give me wisdom, give me understanding so I can react as you would want me to react. That brings up a good point because I've I've been guilty of that very thing where I would be after God for something. And then when, uh, you know, my prayer would increase, my my dedication seemed like it might would increase. Then when God would answer that, then I'd find myself, you know, not seeking his face as much, you know, because I was going after what he could do for me, not who he was. And, that, and that's human nature. Right. But as we learn of him, right. even though that's still probably going to happen, it's not going to be the number one right. Right thing in our lives. Right. We should be able to mature, grow past that as a, a new person in yeah. Christ. And who knows the, the time when that is, because everybody grows at a different rate, but um, sometime in maturing, it should become more about Jesus and in, in that relationship than what He can do for me. Yeah, and, his kingdom, right? Or about Him, right? And and I I, I don't think that we're any of us going to arrive before He's coming. I think every day when He comes back for His church, or if we um, pass um, through life um, uh, through death that we will always um, not achieve that, but we'll always be striving that. But his righteousness, his holiness, um, his anointing is going to be the thing that causes us to be able to make heaven our home. But again, and as we read these scriptures, you heard in here, if you keep my commandments, if you do this, it's not... So whatever I want to do and and claim his promises, you can't claim his promises if you're living the way you want to live. Right. Um, there is, Noah had a very specific way to build the ark. Uh, I mean, everybody likes to talk about the past, how this was just specifically this way. He's still doing that today. But we want to say, well, there's so many ways to get to God, so many ways that, you know, I don't, that might be good for the Pentecostals or the Apostolics. Oh, um, you know, if Baptists feel that way, that's fine with the Baptists or that's fine with um, the Catholic Church. That's fine with um, the Lutherans. Um, again, you notice I've thrown everybody in the pot. Right. So it, it's, um, uh, and we're just, again, I said Pentecostal Apostolics first. Um, a lot of times we we think we're we're the only highway that can make it heaven their own. Now, there's uh, many that claim to be the same as I am that are not really teaching the truths of the Word of God. 
And if you will start learning the truths of the word of God, just as simple as love my brother, love my neighbor as I would love myself. It's not all about speaking in tongues. It's not all about um, the, the miraculous and the healings and stuff. I, I, I can't remember how the portion of the scripture goes. Um, you can have, um, you can have um, signs, wonders, and miracles, but if you don't have love, then it's all for naught. Right. So um, we, we need to get back to the things that God actually has said to us instead of listening to what, what we want to hear. I hope some way, somehow this helped you today. Yes. Um, um, we are, um, I believe, post um, COVID. Um, hopefully we, you can't tell it too heavily that um, we're um, just getting over it. <laughs> but, um, um, but I am thankful my wife's back with me the last few times I did it. Uh, wasn't easy for me to do. Um, and I'm thankful that the Lord intervened and helped me with it. Um, again, I want to thank the Rock Church for all that has done and helped with us. Um, Brother Barber stepped up to the plate um, as a minister. Sister Ruth had COVID. Um, she was out of work and off of, uh, couldn't go to the church or do a lot of different things. Um, he stepped up at the Rock Church in Clute and uh, became acting pastor during a time with Pastor Evans, their crisis is going on. And then with us being um, in the bullpen, and um, I'm very thankful for that. We've gone a little over 41 minutes and we've purposely are trying to keep it um, to a um, smaller time for the fact that I'm praying that people that are maybe are not are religious or maybe not know God as much, this will help them to be able to um, start their own relationship with God. And um, if we can just guide them and direct them just a little bit and let God do the rest, um, then that's um, obviously that's our goal. Obviously, it's whatever God wants to do, period. So um, anything else before we close? No, I just I think that's a good lesson. I want to be a Jonathan I'm, uh, in my heart, my spirit. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lord, I'm thankful for this evening, the opportunity that we're able to get online once again, the health that you've given us, the strength that you've given us in our bodies. I'm very thankful for it. Thank you, Lord God, for your love that you have for us and the patience that you have. Lord, let me have your patience. Let me be patient as you have been patient, as you've been patient with me. Help me to be patient with others. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is hope in this world, and the hope in this world is Jesus Christ. Help me, Lord God, to represent hope, not something that is more scary or more dangerous or more fearful, but Lord, as a child of God, help me to produce and promote hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Wednesday night on campus, I believe Pastor Evans will be um, teaching. Um, um, there's a Wednesday night Bible study. He is back. And then um, Thursday, I believe we're still having our Spanish Bible study. And then um, Sunday morning at um, 10 a.m., Sunday school and morning worship at the Clute campus. The Beaverton um, online at noon, our time. Um, I don't know what, I, I think it's 10 o'clock um, Western time for them, but um, she'll be online. And then I believe our Spanish service to Central Time. All right, love you all. God bless you. Good to see, um, I say good to see. I see Hope um, had a couple comments, but uh, Brent and Hope online. And, Brett. And Brett, I see him on, on there. And um, unfortunately, I don't get to see as many as that's actually on here. And I'm very thankful for you. And you that are going to watch later, I'm very thankful for you too. God bless you. Uh, we love you. If you don't have a home church, um, more than welcome. 
um, to be a part of the Rock Church online, right. um, or um, prefer to be on campus if you live near. God bless you. Share our page. Share our page.